With so many things to keep an eye on at home and at work, many people find it useful to have an all-in-one place to take notes, build systems, manage product launches, or just manage their daily lives. Take Ivan Zhao, who felt that many software companies had improved technology but had merely created digital versions of legacy systems like mainframes rather than innovating online. This had created a mess of different apps, softwares, and file systems that didn't come together, fracturing the working day. But Ivan Zhao is not most people as together with Simon Last, the duo created Notion, an all-in-one workplace tool designed for people who didn't know how to code. Notion appeals to both casual users, but is also strong enough to build a business, and it now has a $10 billion valuation, and is often lauded by productivity gurus like Ali Abdal as one of their most important apps. So in this video, we'll answer the question of what is Notion, and how Notion started. Here's how it happened. Notion was founded in 2013 by Ivan Zhao and Simon Last, and it's a project management and note-taking software designed for task and knowledge management for documents, projects, and teams to work effectively all in one place. Notion was designed in a Lego-style software to make it customizable for users, and their mission is to make computer science available to everyone without the need for coding skills. It's free to use, but can cost four to $10 a month with more features for businesses. But when Notion Notion was first thought up by Zhao and Last, it was a very different beast. Before Notion, Zhao had begun building websites for friends, but he felt that very few people had the skills to build tools that they needed. So in 2013, starting with just four employees, the pair began building Notion, launching their no-code tool in 2015, with Zhao firmly believing in the product. The first intention of Notion was focused on programming, which was similar to Airtable within the no-code movement, which was taking the world by storm at the time. But Zhao admitted that they focused too much on what they wanted to do rather than what the world actually needed. The market was already extremely competitive, but it wasn't the only problem. Notion was initially built on a suboptimal tech stack that couldn't scale and with limited funding, the software kept crashing and the money was running out so quickly that Zhao and Last had to fire their four employees and relocate from costly San Francisco to move to Japan, even borrowing $150,000 from Zhao's mother to prevent liquidation. The pair moved to Kyoto, despite neither of them speaking Japanese, allowing them to sit and focus on building their dream. Zhao realized the world didn't want another no-code app builder, so they went back to the drawing board to think up Notion 1.0, a collaborative workspace tool. The pair worked so hard on permutations, making the same thing over and over again with tiny changes until they were satisfied with the product. They used Figma, a prototyping tool to build their creation, but when they realized they were still reliant on so many different tools to get their work done, they realized that Notion had to be somewhere where people people could get everything done all in one place. So Notion was pivoted, and Zhao and Last became uber obsessed with user interface and user experience to create a product that combines every workspace and productivity tool, barring email and messaging, to create a slick experience in what Zhao describes as a post-file, post-Microsoft Office world. The iterative design process is now a hallmark of everything Notion does. They continue to make constant permutations every time they design something new so that employees understand what it takes to make a great product. Their method of endless iterations means that every employee hashes out rough drafts until they become their best versions, being shared with teammates to stress test and provide feedback. Even new Notion employees have to explore the 2015 rebuild to understand how Notion thinks about things. Notion 1.0 was launched in 2016, with the idea that Notion could replace everything aside from email and Slack. But the app itself was considered unfinished. It offered drag and drop to-do lists, wikis, roadmaps, and 30 document templates. But initial feedback was that despite doing lots of things well, it wasn't the best at any one thing. So over the next two years, Zhao and Last continued to make new changes, new user flow permutations of UI design to make Notion one of the best user experience services out there. They integrated Slack, which had over 3 million users at the time, feeling that replacing email and messaging was pointless, A, due to the competitive in the market, but B, trying to make people change email provider is a massive task. When they launched Notion 2.0 in 2018, which Zhao describes as what he wanted Notion 1.0 to look like, it was an overnight success, rising to Product Hunt's top products list 
and getting praise from the Wall Street Journal, with some calling it a milestone in the history of UX design. But following their last unsuccessful scale-up, Notion released their iOS app in an invite-only mode initially, to make sure the software could handle the dramatic rise in its user base. Notion's success at this stage is even more impressive when you realize they only had 10 employees. And the glowing reviews and spike in new users led to an insane number of calls from VC investors. But contrary to most people, Zhao refused to speak to VCs. Zhao felt that adding extra capital wouldn't necessarily make things better or faster. They wanted to stay focused on the quality of their team, distribution model, and pipeline, with Zhao often joking that three of Herman Melville's wouldn't have written Moby Dick any faster. But critically, they weren't anti-VC. In 2019, after years of continuous growth and a million new users, Notion raised $18 million, which valued them at $800 million. Becoming a unicorn just a year later when they raised another $50 million at a $2 billion valuation, and by 2021, Notion had raised another $275 million, reaching a $10 billion valuation with over 4 million users and partners like Evernote, AWS, and Stripe for business users. Not bad for a business that was almost liquidated six years earlier. Notion is now lauded by many people, notably Ali Abdal on his YouTube channel as one of their most important tools at work and at home. With Notion, Zhao and Last anticipated future needs of an all-in-one productivity tool and battled through challenging times with millions of tweaks to get the job done with a relentless focus on user experience and design. In short, understanding what their market wanted, Notion bills itself as the missing half of Slack, with customizable modules, with databases, task boards, wiki pages, and so much more without the need to code. Notion is used by individuals, but it's become trusted by the likes of Spotify, Pixar, and Headspace. And whilst Notion's success is evident, it's not alone in the market, with Confluence being a major competitor. But that doesn't worry Zhao who believes that the market is huge, everyone with a computer. And that's how it happened.